Hello friends, this side Rahul here and this time we are covering another fantastic topic which is Asset Swaps, shortly known as A and ASW. Asset Swap is one of the most technical uh, fixed income instrument which we have. In the last video we talked about uh, which is credit link notes without hedging, this time we are talking about Asset Swap. Note carefully if you are an Indian treasurer that both are not possible in India. If you refer to the, the master circular or the Gita, which is in, interbank and risk management circular by Reserve Bank of India, which is which is just now available on the internet, both are not possible in India. So these all things are possible outside India in offshore locations like Singapore, you know, New York, London, Luxembourg, Melbourne, Sydney, and all. Now here we are referring to credit derivative asset swap. Asset swap is nothing but uh, the, the bookish definition of the asset swap is when you wanted to, to take the benefit of the gaps in the market. But my technical opinion about, uh, about this uh, asset swap is that asset swap is one of the most critical instruments when you wanted to convert a fixed liability to a floating liability or a floating liability to a fixed li or floating liability to a fixed liability. Before moving further, let me tell you that I have not mentioned that without changing or with changing the notionals because this matters. There are variety of asset swap which we have like par asset swaps, market asset swap, conto asset swap, cross currency asset swap, forward start asset swap and accreting asset swap. There is one more which is amortizing interest, uh, uh, you know, amortizing asset swap. But this which we are mentioning, the complete example, this is par asset swap. This is par asset swap and we have variety one more which we, we would be covering which is cross currency asset swap. Now in this what would happen we have one which is a asset swap buyer which we have asset swap seller. In this we have not quoted any name or if you want we can call uh, asset swap buyer or asset swap seller. Asset swap buyer is paying a full price to somebody and uh, to asset swap seller, seller and he is getting a bond. Now here this full price, let me write here, full price is also known as dirty price and dirty price is known as clean price plus accrued interest which is shortly known as present value of today plus accrued interest. Right, that is. So he is paying a full price and that uh, he is going to get a bond with the value of P. Remember this can be amortized in the books. You must have saw our several videos in IFRS. This can be amortized in the book is only because if the particular person is passing the business model test and the cash flow characteristics test. Cash flow, cash flow characteristics test. If he is not passing either of the two or even he is passing one then he cannot take it as a amortized cost. This cannot be taken as an amortized cost. So if there is an asset swap buyer who is selling, who is buying a bond from here, he needs to pass both which is a business model test and a cash flow characteristics test. Then asset swap is having a bond and the bond is giving a coupon. Now of course that bond is having a credit risk. Today even the, um, uh, the European governments like uh, uh, you know the, the Greece, Italy, Ireland, Portugal, they have a credit risk. It is not that they do not have a credit risk, they have a credit risk. So suggesting that only the corporate bonds have a credit risk, this is wrong. In fact, today majority of the governments would have a credit risk. Now that credit risk is bared by asset swap buyer. What he is doing, he is passing the same coupon to the asset swap seller and he is passing LIBOR plus QST. QST stands for quality spread differential. One should not forget that the particular person is taking a floating risk in his books and that is what I already told you that asset swap is nothing but conversion of fixed liability to a floating liability, sorry, fixed income to a floating income. It could be fixed liability to a floating liability also. Now suppose the bond defaults, suppose the bond defaults like we mentioned here. You know, if the bond defaults then there is a credit default and here we are not mentioning any QST, right? We are not mentioning any QST. In case of any default, what would happen? In case of any default, what would happen? You know, uh, the asset swap buyer cannot honor the transaction to asset swap seller. 
because the income which he is getting from here is has been stalled because the particular bond has been barred now what he is going to do he would have two option either he would continue from his own pocket or maybe the reserves which he is maintaining secondly he should cancel this cancel cancellation means m to m mark to market and that is again a tricky call that whether this would be l1 this would be l2 this would be l3 because the point of the because the main important thing is a set swap majority of the times a set swap majority of the times are not l1 and l2 they are always l3 which is mark to model since they are mark to model henceforth it is difficult to calculate mtm so this mtm could be in the favor of the set buyer this mtm could be favor of the set seller so you don't know about that this is the way you are going to maintain your asset swap this is how the asset swap works so i repeat you have an asset buyer who bought the who bought a bond from the set seller it might possible he he could bought from a different seller also because our next video is coming that and then they both are exchanging the rate he is paying fixed and getting floating he is rating he is taking a floating risk of course he has to take that is what the idea is is all about and here a set buyer if there is a default then he is either going to cancel it or he uh, which is mark to market or he to pay from his, his pocket remember the fact carefully the a set swap float would always be greater greater than the fixed because he is taking a risk of default in his books but at the same time he has to take the cds if he is not taking the cds which is trade default swap there is a there is a risk which is taking in our books there are variety of type of we can have just a repeat par asset swap and this is the par asset swap market asset swap conto asset swap cross currency asset swap forward asset swap accreting asset swap and one is amortizing asset swap with this we thank you very much and in case you have any query you can visit our website www.trajikasetting.in my mobile number is 9899242978 my skype id is rahul5327 and my website is www.trajikasetting.in Thank you and have a wonderful time.